Hello everyone, my name is Zenitsu, and I'm back with another Digimon deck profile video. So as of BT05, we definitely got a whole bunch of new and exciting cards to play around with, so I thought I'd take a look back at the Dioboromon deck and update it for all of the BT05 cards, and this deck is definitely looking to be a lot stronger than it was before, and I definitely think it's a really fun and enjoyable deck. Going over the deck, starting with the Digitama, I'm going to be running one copy of Sumimon. So Sumimon is uh, a pretty solid Digimon all the way back from BT02, where he has this nice inheritable ability where during your turn, if you have a Digimon with the same name as this Digimon, then this Digimon gets plus 2000 DP. So the whole point of this card is you're going to be spawning a whole bunch of Dioboromon tokens. So if this is in the inheritable source of your Dioboromon, then your Dioboromon is going to get plus 2000 DP. And that's still pretty good because it allows him to just be able to beat over other opponents uh, Digimon, and it allows him to survive security checks at that much more effectively. But the main Digitama is going to be four copies of the new Sumimon. So the new Sumimon is really, really good because it has this nice inheritable effect where when attacking once per turn, if this Digimon has unidentified in its typing, then you get to draw one card. So I just find drawing cards to be very, very powerful because it allows you to see more of your deck. And if you see more of your deck, you have more choices to make. And uh, it definitely just allows you to get through a lot of your cards faster. And especially with all of the new updates that, that that the deck has got, the vast majority of our Digimon are going to be unidentified, so it has some slightly higher synergy with the deck overall, but the main purpose of the card is to act as that draw engine, and it's going to be a really good card for doing that. Next, uh, on to the uh, rookies, I'm going to be running four copies of Karamon. So this is the BT02 version of Karamon, and this version of Karamon is still really, really good for the deck overall, and uh, this has the nice inheritable ability where during your turn, when you play another Digimon that has the same name as this Digimon, then you get to draw one card. So if the whole point is to have a Dioboromon and then spawn Dioboromon tokens, every time you're going to be spawning Dioboromon tokens, you're essentially going to be drawing a card, and this isn't once per turn, so that means the more Dioboromon tokens you could spawn in a turn with a Dioboromon out and he's under it, then the more cards you're going to draw, and that's just still very, very powerful because there's some very good cards that you really want to see and you really want to get into. Next up, I'm going to be running three copies of Toy Agumon. So Toy Agumon is really only in here just because he has the nice inheritable ability of Reboot. And we're using Reboot not necessarily because we're trying to give Dioboromon blocker, but we're using Reboot to, to try to keep our Dioboromons alive as efficiently as we possibly can, and making it so that the opponent can't swing into our Dioboromons as easily just by making them active during their turn. Just it makes it that much harder for them to try to clear our Dioboromons. Next up, I'm going to be running four copies of Karamon. So this is the new Karamon from BT05, and this Karamon has a really powerful on-play ability where you get to check the top five cards of your deck and add one Digimon with unidentified in its typing and one Arata Tamer card from among them and place them into our hand, and then the rest go to the bottom. So this is just your classic on-play digger card where he's just looking for very specific cards. The fact that the majority of our deck is going to be unidentified Digimon. It just means this card has a whole bunch of potential targets that he could take, and that's what makes him really, really good. On top of which, uh, the added ability of adding our main tamer into our hand is also a nice little benefit. And then the last uh, rookie of the deck is going to be uh, three copies of the Promo Karamon. So the Promo Karamon is really only in here just because he's another unidentified Digimon, on top of which he's also a Karamon. So the fact that we just have so many different Karamons is still very, very viable. And then on top of which it has the nice inheritable ability where during the opponent's turn, this Digimon gets plus 1000 DP. So this ability doesn't matter as much considering you're only getting the plus 1000 on the the opponent's turn, but similar to what Toy Agumon is doing, we're trying to utilize this ability more defensively than offensively, so that way it's even harder for them to interact with our Dioboromons, and it's even harder for them to clear our Dioboromons. Next, uh, on to the champions, I'm going to be running four copies of Kurisarimon. So this version of Kurisarimon is pretty nice because it has the really powerful inheritable ability where during your turn, if you play another Digimon that has the same name as this Digimon, then you get plus one memory. 
So this is kind of just doing the same exact thing that the Karamon is doing, where instead of drawing, you're just going to be gaining one memory every time you play a Digimon of the same name as this one. So the ideal situation is you're just going to be spawning Dioboramon tokens, and then for each Dioboramon token you're going to be spawning, this card is going to gain you one memory for doing so. Next up, uh, I'm going to be running uh, four copies of this version of Kurisarimon. So this version of Kurisarimon from BT05 is a really, really powerful addition to the deck because it has uh, two big abilities, an innate ability and an inheritable ability. So its innate ability is a when digivolved ability, where if you don't have an errata card in play, then you get to play one for free. So uh, the whole idea is that you uh, play Karamon to try to search for the Tamer, and then you digivolve it into this Kurisarimon to then play said Tamer for free. And that's just really, really powerful, just being able to play your Tamer for free. And then it has the really powerful inheritable ability where during your turn, this uh, Digimon and all of your Digimon that share the same name as this Digimon gain Rush. So again, if the whole idea is just trying to spam out Dio Boromon tokens, every Dio Boromon token you're going to be spamming out is going to gain Rush if Kurisarimon is under the evolution source of the Dio Boromon. So uh, this is just really powerful because each token you're going to be spawning allows you to present even more pressure and more aggression onto the opponent, and uh, it could really help close out games even faster than the deck could before. And then the last champion of the deck is going to be four copies of Shademon. So Shademon is a very fantastic Digimon for the deck for a whole bunch of different reasons. The first big reason is he's also an unidentified Digimon, so he's playing around with some of the unidentified support that Dio Boromon added in BT05. And then on top of which, he is going to be the champion blocker of our deck. So usually you want to try to run a set of champion blockers for your deck, and Shademon is going to be our selected champion blocker, but on top of all of that, he also has the added benefit of having the security ability, so that way if he is checked in the security, then he gets to be played for free, and that's just really, really powerful just spawning a uh, free blocker on board, and that's just really powerful at stopping some of the opponent's aggression, and it could potentially save us, on top of which just getting a free body on board is still very, very good, because it allows us to just try to get up into our higher stages that much faster, and then on top of all that, he does have the downside of that uh, this Digimon can't attack during your turn, but we're not really trying to utilize the card for aggressive purposes, we're trying to utilize the card for defensive purposes, so he doesn't really need to attack. Next up onto the ultimates, I'm going to be running four copies of Inframon. So this is the BT02 version of Inframon, and we're really only playing him just because he has the really powerful ability of during your turn. When you digivolve uh, this card into a Dioboromon from your hand, then you get to reduce uh, the uh, evolution by one. So being able to reduce the evolution cost of your Dioboromons uh, by one is really, really powerful, especially with all of the different Dioboromons that we have, just because it allows us to tempo out uh, our Dioboromons that much more efficiently. And that just is a really powerful thing for the deck to be doing, just because we want to get into our Dioboromons as quickly as we possibly can. Next up, I'm going to be running two copies of uh, Where Monzimon. So Where Monzimon is a pretty solid card just because he's basically the black equivalent of Monzimon. So uh, this is a really nice Digimon just because he has a low play cost uh, for a level 5, and on top of which he also has a low Evo cost, so it doesn't necessarily matter how we utilize the card. He's just going to be a very efficient tempo tool to try to get into our higher stages that much more faster and that much more efficiently, and that's kind of all we're really looking to utilize the card for is just the ability to go up into our higher levels faster and efficiently. And then the last ultimate of the deck is going to be two copies of Inframon. So this is the brand new Inframon in BT05, and this is a pretty powerful Digimon. So it has an innate ability where you basically get to warp Digivolve this off of a Karamon by Digivolving it for four and ignoring the rest of the evolution requirements. So just the availability to warp Digivolve up into our level fives is still very, very powerful because, again, if we're trying to get into our Dioboromons as fast as as possible, then this is just nice to warp Digivolve up into, so that way we could then go into Dioboromon the following turn, and then just utilize Dioboromon in some very powerful ways. 
So definitely having the availability of being able to warp Digivolve is nice. And then on top of which, it has a really powerful inheritable ability where it's an on-deletion ability where you basically get to play one Dioboromon token for free. And that's kind of it. So just being able to have your Dioboromons replace themselves with another Dioboromon, even though it is a token and the token is going to be relatively weak, it's still nice to have the utility option of just always being able to have a Dioboromon on the field because the deck is solely focused around them and the fact that we want to try to utilize them in as many different ways as possible. And that way, the ability to always just have a Dioboromon on field is very, very nice for how the deck wants to function. Next, on to the Megas, I'm going to be running two copies of Dioboromon. So this version of Dioboromon is really, really nice because he is also a black Digimon and the other Dioboromons are white, so that could or could not come in handy depending on the situation. But on top of which, he also has an Evo cost of 3, where as we saw with the original Dioboromon, he has an Evo cost of 4, so he's a little bit more efficient to go up into. And then on top of all of that... Uh, he has uh, the very nice uh, ability where during your turn, this uh, Digimon gets a security attack plus one for each Diaboromon you have in play. So this does count himself, which is really, really powerful because it's almost like he naturally just has security attack plus one. But if you have any other Diaboromons or Diaboromon tokens in play, then he's only going to be hitting for more of the opponent's security. And that's just really, really powerful because it can help close out games even faster. Next up, uh, I'm going to be running uh, three copies of Diaboromon. So this Diaboromon is the BTO2 version of Diaboromon, and he is overall still a very powerful Digimon that we want to be utilizing, just because he is a Diaboromon and we have even more cards to support him. So the only unfortunate thing about the card is he has only 10,000 DP with an Evo cost of 4, but uh, we have ways to get up into them that are a little bit more efficient than before. And then on top of which, we're really trying to utilize this card for his two very powerful abilities. So his first ability is he has a when attacking ability, where you get to play a Diaboromon token for free. And that's really powerful because he still has all of his built-in synergy with all of the stuff from before. And then on top of which, he has all of the new synergy to just try to create more Diaboromon tokens. And then on top of the fact that we're going to be spawning Diaboromon tokens with his on attack ability, he also has a very nice ability where during both players' turns, if this card would be destroyed by battle, you could destroy another Diaboromon instead. So this is really, really powerful because he has some form of self-protection, so that way you could try to keep a Diaboromon around, and then he plays off of his own ability, where if it, you are attacking with him, you'll spawn a Diaboromon token, and then if he would die to security, then you just sacrifice the Diaboromon token that you just spawned to keep this Diaboromon around, but if he wins the security check, then you get the Diaboromon, and this is really, really powerful in combination with something like the new uh, Kurisarimon, where the uh, Diaboromon token that you spawned will gain the rush ability. So this is just a overall fantastic card for the deck to be playing around with just because he's able to consistently spawn more and more Diaboromon tokens and he becomes more of a threat the later the game goes. Next I'm going to be running two copies of Diaboromon. So this is the new BT05 Diaboromon, and this Diaboromon is pretty solid just because uh, similarly to like the promo Diaboromon, he has the exact same stats. So it's really easy and efficient to get up into this Diaboromon versus the BT02 one. And then on top of which, he has a really nice uh, when digivolving ability where you basically get to play a Diaboromon token for free. So this is really nice because it still has a lot of the same synergies as the previous Diabormon, where he is able to spawn a Diabormon token. It's just not recursive, so you can only do this once. But sometimes, depending on how the game is progressing, the one token is all you really need. And then if you pair this up with... Uh, the new Inframon, then you're just going to try to swing with him, and then he's going to die and replace himself with another Diaboromon. And then if you have Kurisarimon, the token that you're going to be spawning has Rush. And then if you have the new, the old Inframon, then he's basically going to evolve for two. So there's just a whole bunch of very high synergy with the card, and there's definitely a whole bunch of ways you could utilize the card that make him very, very powerful and definitely something you really want to run. And then the last Mega of the deck is going to be three copies of Armageddon. So Armageddon is an absolutely insane powerhouse of a card, and this is probably the main reason why Diaboromon is going to be as powerful of a deck as he's going to be, just because this card is insanely strong. 
So the first few things to know is his stat line. So he does evolve for three off of a black or white. So he is intended to digivolve off of Diobormon if you want to. But the fact that he evolves for three and has 15,000 DP just makes him really, really powerful and a really strong force to be reckoned with it just off of the, his stats alone. And then on top of which, uh, he also has another ability where when you play this card from your hand, you could delete one of your Diobormons to reduce his play cost by 12. So ordinarily, he has a play cost of 15, but if you sacrifice a Diobormon, then he basically is a level 7 that you're playing for 3. And that's Again, really, really powerful to be thinking about because there's so many easy ways for the deck to just spawn Diobormon tokens that this card just becomes online no matter what. And then on top of that ability, he also has the Rush ability. So even if you do play him for three, he could attack right away. So again, that's just really, really powerful because whether you're digivolving him or attacking with him, he's still going to be able to attack the second you play him. And that's just still really, really powerful. And then on top of all of that, he has another ability, which is his most important ability, where during all players' turns, all level 7 Digimon cannot activate their when Digivolving effects. So this is an absolutely insane effect that tries to shut out a whole bunch of level 7 Digimon from trying to be as powerful and oppressive as they could be, because the vast majority of them do have when Digivolved abilities, and this card just shuts them all off. Next up, onto the options, I'm going to be running three copies of Catastrophe Cannon. So, Catastrophe Cannon is a four-costed black option card, and it's a pretty decent option card for the deck to be playing with, just because it has the main ability of being able to D-Digivolve 2 on one of the opponent's Digimon. So, just D-Digivolve 2 alone is already pretty solid, just because it'll help you try to deal with a Digimon you normally couldn't otherwise, even though the opponent is still going to be keeping a body on board, and we are not exactly playing a whole lot of ways of blocking it, it still could help get rid of some problematic Digimon that we normally wouldn't be able to deal with otherwise. And then it has another ability on top of it, which is probably the main reason why we want to play this card, where if you have a Diabormon in play, then you get to spawn a Diabormon token. So this is really powerful just because, again, the whole point of Diabormon is trying to spawn as many Diabormon tokens as we possibly can, and having an option card that also could spawn us Diabormon tokens is is very, very nice and definitely something we want to gain out of the deck just because of all the different synergies that we could line up with this card. And then lastly, onto the Tamer, I'm going to be running three copies of Arata Sonata. So this is going to be the main Tamer of the deck, and this Tamer just overall has very high synergy with the deck as well. Similarly to like how we're running the option, this also has a very powerful ability where during your turn, when you digivolve a Digimon into Diaboromon, you could suspend this Tamer to play one Diaboromon token for free. So on top of the fact that uh, we are going to want to try to digivolve up into our Diaboromons, he's going to be rewarding us for doing that by giving us another Diaboromon. So similarly to how uh, Catastrophe Cannon is just spawning Diaboromon tokens, Arata Sonata is also really good at spawning Diaboromon tokens. So again, if we pair that up with Karamon, we could draw a card. If we pair it up with Kurisarimon, then we also gain a memory for doing it. And that's just really, really powerful to think about. And then on top of which, it's still spawning another Diaboromon token so that way we have something to line up our Armageddon with and again like there's just so much potential that could come from this type of ability for the deck that it's really hard to run the deck without this type of ability. And then he has another ability where at the start of your turn, if you have a Digimon with unidentified and it's typing in your trash, then you're just going to be gaining one memory. So it's not hard to have an unidentified in our trash, and just the fact that he's just going to be passively gaining us a memory every single turn is really, really nice, on top of the fact that he also can spawn Diaboromon tokens is also really, really nice. And then you still have so many other different cards that you could utilize in the deck to really customize it to be your own. So that's kind of it for the Diobormon deck. I definitely think with all of the new cards, the Diobormon deck it definitely got a lot stronger just because it is more consistent, it's easier to play a lot of their cards, and they have just some overall really, really powerful cards that they are going to start utilizing. So the whole point of the Diobormon deck, for the most part, is trying to just spawn as many Diobormons as possible, and now that you have different ways of utilizing those Diobormons, it definitely makes the deck a lot more viable than it was in the past. And then on top of which it, you still have a whole bunch of room to try to customize the deck to fit what you are looking for out of the deck, and it has a whole bunch of really interesting things that it can do. 
So that's all I have for this video. As always, I'll have the deck listed down in the description below, and feel free to leave a comment of your thoughts down in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you in the next video.